Welcome back to the Tom's River Fire Academy Pump School lesson number four. Understanding friction loss and calculating friction loss in two and a half inch hose. In this slide, we are shown the engine pressure formula. As pump operators, we need to determine what pressure we need to pump each discharge at in order to deliver the required pressure to each nozzle. So the nozzle flows the needed amount of water for fire suppression. If we look at the engine pressure formula, we need to add the nozzle pressure and the friction loss together. We also need to compensate for any elevation if we are pumping through upper floors or if we're pumping downhill. Lastly, we need to compensate for friction loss in any device, such as a gated Y or a Siamese. As a rule of thumb, we add an additional 10 PSI for each of these devices. Friction loss can be defined as the loss of energy or pressure as water moves through a fire hose. Water moving through our hose creates a turbulent flow. The water molecules rub against each other and against the inside lining of the hose. If we go back to lesson number two, nozzles, we learn that each nozzle has a nozzle pressure. As an example, we know that a fog nozzle requires 100 psi nozzle pressure to operate correctly. If we connect 100 feet of hose to our pump panel and put a fog nozzle on the other end and pump at 100 psi, we will deliver less than the 100 psi nozzle pressure. We need to increase the engine pressure to compensate for the loss of pressure as water moves through the hose. This is what we refer to as friction loss. Our job as pump operators is to understand and compensate for friction loss in our hose lays. Two important concepts to keep in mind that when you increase the flow, you increase the friction loss. Secondly, you can reduce friction loss by increasing the size of the hose. This is one reason why we use 5 inch hose for supply lines. We can flow large quantities of water with low friction loss. In order to calculate friction loss, we need to know three things. First is the gallons per minute or the flow. Second is the size of the hose in diameter. And the last is the length of the hose leg. In this slide, we can see an illustration of the things we need to calculate friction loss. If we look at a nozzle, that will give us the GPM as long as we have a good understanding of nozzles. Second, we can see the hose size. And lastly, we need to know how long the hose lay is. One important point, friction loss is calculated on each 100 foot section of hose. Don't be confused by 50 foot hose lengths. We're going to go ahead and use a rule of thumb formula to calculate friction loss in two and a half inch hose. We are going to use two and a half inch hose because it, because it is a pretty easy example to start with. We use rule of thumb formulas for calculating friction loss for this class because they are easy to remember at 3 a.m. These rule of thumb formulas are not exact, but are close enough for our purposes. In this example, we can see that we're using a nozzle with a tip size, so we know that we have a smooth bore nozzle. From lesson two, we know that a smooth bore nozzle on a hand line requires 50 psi nozzle pressure. We are given a tip size of inch and one eighth. From our nozzle flow chart, we know that a inch and one eighth tip will flow 265 gallons per minute. We also know the length which is 200 feet. We now have all the needed information to use the rule of thumb formula for calculating friction loss in its two and one half inch hose layout. The rule of thumb calculation for two and a half inch hose is called the drop 10 method. First we take the flow, 265 gallons a minute, and remove the last digit. In this case, we get rid of the 5, which leaves us with 26. Second, we take 26 and subtract 10 from it. 
This is where we get the drop 10 name from. Once we subtract, subtract the 10 from 26, we are left with 16. This 16 is the friction loss for each 100 foot section of our two and a half inch hose. Now we just add the nozzle pressure and friction loss together to get the required engine pump pressure. In this case, we have 200 feet of hose, so there is 16 PSI of friction loss in the first 100 feet of hose and 16 PSI friction loss in the second 100 feet of hose. That gives us a total friction loss of 32 PSI. Add the 32 PSI friction loss to the 50 PSI nozzle pressure and, and the result is a required engine pump pressure of 82 PSI. As with all our rules of thumb, there are limitations. This method is only good up to 400 gallons per minute. Just understand that if we are using two and a half inch hose as a hand line, our flows are never greater than 325 or 350 gallons per minute. Here is an illustration of the problem we just did on the previous slide. Quick tip, if you look at the nozzle, you can quickly determine if the nozzle pressure will be 50 PSI for a smooth bore hand line or 100 PSI for a fog nozzle. If you know the nozzle pressure, you can throttle up to at least the nozzle pressure. This will get water into the line and give you a few moments to compose yourself and calculate the friction loss. When you work with friction loss numbers, you can round up or round down in order to more quickly multiply numbers together. Try this practice problem. We know the flow, we know the size of the hose, and we know the length. The flow is 325 gallons a minute. Using the drop 10 method, we get a friction loss of 22 PSI. There are three 100 foot sections of hose. The friction loss is 22 PSI for each 100 foot section. The total friction loss is 66 PSI. The nozzle pressure is 50 PSI. Add these numbers together and you get an engine discharge pressure of 116 PSI. Quick tip. For most of the fires in Tom's River and surrounding communities are extinguished with the use of pre-connected hand lines. As a pump operator, if you can familiarize yourself with the pre-connected lines on your apparatus, then you should not have to calculate for any friction loss. However, if you need to extend the line by adding lengths of dead load, then you will have to compensate for the additional friction loss. Also, you want to get comfortable with pumping multiple pre-connected hand lines from your apparatus. Many times at working fires, we will be using two inch and three quarter hand lines and an additional two and a half inch hand line. Even though these lines may be pre-connected, the engine discharge pressures for each line may be different. In this case, it requires you as the pump operator to use the gate valves and throttle control to maintain the correct engine discharge pressure for each line. Thanks for watching.